Good morning, everybody. It is 8.33 here in Florida. And peace, blessings, and love to everybody. Okay, you guys. Um, I'm going to be doing part three. And if you have not watched part one and part two of the entirety of the gospel teaching series, I pray that you do so. Okay, and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the end of part two just in case you didn't hear it or see it uh, to start part three so here we go so again we see that Adam had sin and death and everyone else after his seed did also we also see that there is a law written on our hearts but we can choose to execute ignore or excuse those laws according to our conscience or better known as the hardening of the heart. This again started in the garden by Adam and Eve ignoring a direct commandment to not eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So, through the deceitfulness and temptation of Satan, they hardened their hearts towards God and chose their own will over the will of Father God. And at that point, when they chose to eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, they became ashamed, condemned, feeling guilty. They now had a conscious awareness of the knowledge of good and evil. They then were banned from the garden, from the tree of life, separated from God. Sin and death was now their life. The Torah, also known as the Law, was given to the Israelites. There was a covering for sin, but they were never perfectly washed clean until the blood of our Lord Jesus came. So, has it really always been just by faith in God that you were sanctified, justified, and made righteous, sealed with His Holy Spirit, if so, then why didn't we just pass go and go directly to heaven? Better yet, why did Jesus have to come and shed his precious blood? Remember the scripture, Romans 2, 11 through 16. For there is no respect of persons with God, for as many as have sinned without law, shall also perish without law. Now, I covered in part two that sin and death entered the world, but where there was no law, sin was not imputed. But again, sin and death still entered in through Adam. So it says, without law shall also perish without law and as many as have sinned in the law shall be judged by the law for not the hearers of the law are just before God but the doers of the law shall, shall be justified and that means the whole law because it is evident that the uh, flesh will not be justified by the law in other words, no one has ever been able to keep the law, the 613 of the Torah, okay, of the Israelites. There's, there's Gentiles and there's Israelites in the Bible, okay? You're either an Israelite under the law or you're a Gentile that doesn't know the law. Now, there were Gentiles that did come into some communities and um, they were... Uh, taken in and shown the law but as a whole in the Bible there were two types of people there was Gentiles and there's there were Israelites that were under the law okay just in case some people don't know they don't realize but you had to fulfill the whole entire law if you don't fulfill the whole entire law then you had to make atonements sacrifices and that's what they did uh, weekly, monthly, and yearly. and uh, But it never made them just. It never made them completely righteous, sanctified, justified, and righteous, and sealed with the Holy Spirit. 
That's one of the reasons why the Lord Jesus Christ had to come. Well, those are the big reasons why our Lord Jesus had to come. Now it says here, For when the Gentiles, which have not the law, do by nature the things contained in the law, these having not the law are a law unto themselves, which show the work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness, and their thoughts, the meanwhile accusing or else excusing one another. In the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel. Now, this is Paul speaking. It says, according to my gospel, which, again, Paul's gospel. But we know it's the Lord Jesus Christ's gospel, the good news in the Greek. And uh, we also know that, it has, yes, it has always been by faith. But there was a reason that Jesus had to come. There were many reasons why Jesus had to come okay and we're going to go through all that to the best of my ability uh, so anyways let's read this uh, so what's being said here is that there is no excuse you better receive Jesus as your Savior because there will come a day where there will be a judgment day and the only thing that is going to save you is not your good works because all have sinned and have fallen short of the glory of God. So we need to accept Jesus' blood atonement, his covenant, the new covenant made with Abraham on behalf of his seed and all the nations of the world. Now we're going to go to Hebrews 10. If you haven't read Hebrews 10, I would suggest that you do so because, uh, well, all of Hebrews is an amazing it's an amazing book, you guys. Anyways, let's go on. Hebrews 10. For the law, having a shadow of good things to come, and not the very image of the things, can never with those sacrifices which they offered year by year continually make the comers thereunto perfect. And that is the day of, to of atonement. For then would they not have ceased to be offered? Because that the worshippers once purged should have had no more conscience of sins. But in those sacrifices there is a resemblance or a remembrance again made of sins every year the day on the Day of Atonement, y'all. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he saith, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared me. A burnt offerings, in burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, thou hast had no pleasure. Then said I, Lo, I come. In the volume of the book it is written of me, To do thy will, O God. Above when he said sacrifice and offering and burnt offerings and offering for sin thou wouldest not, neither hadst pleasure therein which are offered by the law. Then said he, Lo, I come to do thy will, O God. He taketh away the first, that he may establish the second. And this is a huge verse right here, you guys. We have to understand exactly what the Lord Jesus did for us. It says, By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Not again and again and again and again over and over and over and over like those other sacrifices. Once for all. For all what? For all who would believe and trust upon His blood atonement. For all what? For all sin. Sin, in the singular, was put on the cross. Okay? And then we go on. So we can see that, yes, it has always been by faith. But there was sin and death and the law to be taken care of. Because as we read in Romans 2, 11 through 16, all will be judged that are in or out of the law either by the law of the heart or the law of Moses. 
So the covenant with Abraham and David was fulfilled through Jesus. Genesis 12, 7. Now the Lord had said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse them that curseth thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. After these things the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield, and thy exceeding great reward. And Abram said, Lord God, what wilt thou give me, seeing I go childless? And the steward of my house is this, Eliezer of Damascus. And Abram said, Behold, to me thou hast given no seed, and lo, one born in my house is mine heir. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, This shall not be thine heir, but he that shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be thine heir. And he brought him forth abroad, and said, Look now toward heaven, and tell the stars, if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, So shall thy seed be. And he believed in the Lord, and he counted it to him for righteousness. And he said unto him, I am the Lord that brought thee out of Ur of the Chaldees to give thee this land to inherit it. And he said, Lord God, whereby shall I know that I shall inherit it? And he said unto him, Take me an heifer of three years old, and a she-goat of three years old, and a ram of three years old, and a turtle dove, and a young pigeon, and he took unto him all thing, all these, and divided them in the midst, and laid each piece one against another, but the birds divided he not. And when the fowls came down upon the carcasses, Abram drove them away. And when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram, and lo, and horror of great darkness fell upon him. And he said unto Abram, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them for a hundred years. And also that nation whom they serve shall serve will I judge, and afterward shall they come out with great substance. And thou shalt go to thy fathers in peace. Thou shalt be buried in a good old age. But in the fourth generation they shall come hither again. For the iniquity of the Amorites is not full, is not yet full. And it shall come to pass that when the sun went down and it was dark, behold, a smoking furnace and a burning lamp that passed between those pieces you see this is the covenant that I was speaking of in the video prior this is a covenant that was made with Abraham and God and God was the only one that passed through these pieces so he was the one that made the covenant and everything that he said and he made it that way so that everything that he said would be exactly right and exactly come true, okay? And then we're going to go down here. And then there is the covenant about Jesus with King David. 
Centuries after Abram died, the children of Israel took possession of the land under Joshua's leadership. And that's in Joshua 21:43. At no point in history, though, has Israel controlled all of the land God had specified. There remains, therefore, a final ju- a fulfillment of the Abrahamic covenant that will see Israel occupying their God-given homeland to the fullest extent. The fulfillment will be no will be more than a matter of geography. It will also be a time of holiness and restoration. And this is in Ezekiel 20, uh, 40, 44, and 36, 1, 37, 28, if you guys would like to look it up for yourself. And the Abrahamic covenant also promised many descendants genesis 12 2 god promised that the number of abraham's children would rival that of the dust of the earth genesis 15 16 nations and kings would proceed from him genesis 17 6 it is significant that the promise was given to an aged childless couple but Abraham did not waver through unbelief, Romans 4.20. And his wife, Sarah, considered him faithful, who had made the promise, Hebrews 11.11. 11. Abraham was justified by his faith, Genesis 15.6. And he and his wife welcomed Isaac, the son of promise, into their home when they were about a hundred and 90 years old respectively genesis 21 through uh, 21 5 god reiterates the abrahamic covenant to isaac and to his son jacob whose name god changes to israel the great nation is eventually established in the land where abraham had dwelled king david one of abraham's many descendants is given the davidic covenant and that's in Sam two Samuel seven twelve to sixteen promising a son of David who would one day rule over the Jewish nation and all nations from Jerusalem many other Old Testament prophecies point to the blessed future fulfillment of that promise and that's in Isaiah 11 Micah 4 and Zechariah 8 the Abrahamic covenant also included a promise of blessing and redemption Genesis 12 3 all the earth would be blessed through Abraham this promise finds its fulfillment in the new covenant Jeremiah 31 31 through 34 Luke 22:20, 20, which is ratified by Jesus Christ, the son of Abraham, and the Redeemer, and Redeemer, who would one day restore everything. And that's in Acts 3, 21. So, in conclusion, yes, it has always progressively been by believing in God for our righteousness. But faith in the new covenant, the blood covenant, Jesus the Christ, the anointed one, is what sanctifies, justifies, and makes one completely righteous, sealed with the promise of the Holy Spirit. Okay, Galatians 3, 5. We're almost done, you guys. He, therefore, that ministereth to you the Spirit... And worketh miracles among you, doeth he by the works of the law, or by the hearing of faith? Even as Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness, know ye therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. And the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith, preached before the gospel unto Abraham saying, And these shall all nations be blessed, 
So then they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse, for it is written, Cursed is every one that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident. For the just shall live by faith. And the law is not of faith, but the man that doeth them shall live in them. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Curses every one that hangeth on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. And I will leave you with this. There was never any sealing of the Holy Spirit. And I heard a man say that there were two whole, there were two different types of spirits back in the uh, Old Testament. And that's simply not true. But what is true is that the Spirit could be given and taken away. The Spirit would fall upon but the Spirit never indwelled and sealed someone. Okay? The Holy Spirit sealment has never come until the Lord Jesus Christ. Ephesians 1.13 In whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, Ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. You know, we are promised that we are sealed until the day of redemption. That's in Ephesians 4.30 if you'd like to look that up. And uh, we're going to do a little study on the sealing of the Holy Spirit so that everyone can understand that no one in the Old Testament was ever sealed with the Holy Spirit of God. I pray this has been a blessing to you. I pray that you listen to uh, the rest of the teachings because I'm really going to start digging here uh, into who the Lord Jesus Christ is and what he did for us and who we are in him, through him. God bless each and every one of you. Amen and amen.